on YouTube welcome back to another video today I'm going to be creating a James Rodriguez poster for you guys I've been asked in the comment a few times uh, by different subscribers that they want this poster tutorial so I'm just going to create it for you now now I'm going to break this down into about five steps first going to be cutting out the images next is going to be putting shapes in the design together then it's going to be overlaying the images and then adding the text and then the texture and then that's it hopefully that will make it a bit easier to follow the other posters that I've done have done really well so hopefully you will enjoy this one if you do let me know in the comments below but let's get straight into it alright guys just a quick update I've seen that a lot of you aren't subscribed to or watching the video so I'm just gonna put a little thing on the screen now which will show you the percentage I'm not making you subscribe but if you are enjoying the videos then it really really help me out if you could subscribe and just show a bit of love to the channel because I'm trying to reach that a thousand marks so I can start uh, improving my videos for you guys and start um, uh, start being able to create more videos and helping you out more so if you are watching this and you aren't subscribed just take a bit of time out of your day and just subscribe and it just gives me that extra push you know just to make more videos for you guys thank you for watching and enjoy the video So this is the poster we're going to be creating, um, it's not really that intense, it looks really good, it's got a few elements to it that you're going to need to know how to do, but apart from that it's a clean cut image and some shapes and text, nothing more than that. So I'm going to leave all the images in the description below, then you'll be able to download them off the internet and use them in the video tutorial and you can hopefully create this image for yourself. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing you need to do is get your A4 document and then we're going to just download the images that we've got. So I've got them all on the top here. I've got this one, this one, and this one. So once you've got those, you can basically take your quick selection tool and start cutting them out. doesn't matter what size really, just make sure you select the whole thing, select all of it, and then you'll be able to cut them out with the Refine Edge brush tool, and then you'll have your images cut out. So I'm going to do that now, and then I'll come back to you once I finish that. Right, welcome back guys. So I've cut the images out, I've got this one, and then I've got this one, they're both cut out, ready to go. So the next thing we're going to do is add the shapes to our background. So you're going to want to go to the A4 document, take your pen tool, and draw at the three corners that I do. So you want to go here, to here, and then that's going to draw you a shape. Now you're going to have a stroke, uh, you want to get rid of that, so go there and then click off. Then go to your fill and click the blue one. This can be any blue you want, but I'm going to use like a baby blue, light blue. And then I'm going to duplicate this shape and rotate it. So then I'm going to have a white shape. So if I command J, that makes two. And then I just need to hold shift and rotate it like so. There we go. We've got both our shapes. Now I'm just going to select my pen tool and then go to fill and choose white. As you can see, we've got the two colors all done. That's the shapes pretty much already done. So we need to add three circles later on, but that won't take very long. So the next thing you're going to do is select your white shape, double click on it to get blending options. Then you're going to go to the drop down shadow option. Now this is quite important, you want to make sure that you can see the shadow. You don't want it too harsh though, you want it to sort of just like fade into the blue um, just so it's quite a nice, so it looks like it's overlaying the top of it. You can change the opacity as well if you want to make it darker or lighter. I'm going to leave it about 30. So you can copy these settings right here and that should be all good okay that's all ready to go the next thing we're going to do is add our images you want to just get your cutouts so you take this one and then you're just going to drag it and drop it in like so i'm going to enlarge this one make it really big make sure that i overlay it to the blue background like so so drag it and drop it below the white one and then you have your image so the next thing you're going to do is probably make it fairly big it doesn't need to be too big just big enough so that it covers most of it and then what you're going to do is go to your blending options and change it to overlay there we go so that's the first image all done so you can close that now don't save that's all done the next thing we're going to do is take our stadium image so unlock it from the background drag and drop it into the picture like so and then we're just going to make sure it's big enough to cover the whole shape and then we're going to clip and mask it to the design of the of this shape so hold alt and then click like so as you can see it's connected to that then you can sort of move it around position it how you want it to it personal preference really I'm just gonna have it where I see fit I'm just gonna basically put it to one corner like so and by doing this I've uh, initially got all the images in I need to put one more image in but that's after I change the color of this so basically what I'm gonna do now is 
go to the blending options and add a solid color. This is going to be like a mediumish gray, uh, just to add a little bit of contrast. And then I'm going to overlay this. You can you can choose what you want really, or you can just reduce the opacity. You don't have to use a blending option. You can sort of use whatever you want. So I'm going to use something, but something like that works well. So. We've got our images in, now I'm gonna drag the last one in. Right, so now I've got the final image in the design. The next thing we're gonna do is change the color of it to black and white because then I think it adds a bit more contrast and makes the blue and the white pop a bit more. So you're gonna to go to image, adjustments, and then go to black and white, like so. And just don't touch any of the settings, just click okay. And then we're gonna select it again and go to camera raw filter. Now this is gonna just make the image look a bit better. So we're gonna to go to details, sharpening about 50 then go to basic go down to texture make it about 62 clarity 24 and dehaze a little bit the next thing we're going to do is probably increase the contrast a bit more as well and then you're going to just click ok by doing this i've basically made the image look a lot better and a lot cleaner not so cut out and pixelated that's all of that done now the next thing we're going to need to do is probably add a drop shadow to some of these so if we go and double click on the picture drop shadow again and then we can sort of just singulate where we want the shadow to be. Personal preference, as I said, and how big you want it as well. I'm just going to add like a medium fade again, just so it doesn't look too harsh. Right, so now we've done that, we need to add the text and then some texture, and then we're basically done. So I'm going to show you how to add the text next. Right, so what you're going to need to do is make sure you've got this font downloaded, or you can use your own ones. I'm using impact and I'm going to set my size to 90. You're going to just click type and then you're going to type James and then you're going to click OK and then you're going to select it again, type another one and then you're going to type Rodriguez. Once you've got these two typed out in the same font and the same size, you're just going to select them both, uh, left align them and then you're going to move them to the edge of the page like so. Now we've got those, now I'm just going to group them and I'm going to call them text one. So the next thing you need to do is duplicate this about five or six times. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna just Command T and slowly move them down the page. And then once we've done all this, grab them all, group them all together. Um, and then we're gonna move them below the white one so you can't actually see them. And then what we're gonna do is change them to a stroke. This is quite a simple task. You shouldn't find it too hard if you've used Photoshop quite a lot. If I select all of them, group them, that's done. Now I'm just gonna, as you can see, I'm just gonna move them below. Now you can't see them above the thing. And then we're just gonna go down and select the text and we're just gonna reduce the fill like so. Just watch how I do it. And then once we've done that, you won't be able to see them for a split second. And then after we've reduced the fill on them, we're just gonna go down to the blending options and we're just gonna give them a stroke like so. As you can see, now they're back. So you wanna set this to about two, probably, and you wanna make sure it's black. Once you've uh, done this for all of them, you'll see more what I'm on about, and it'll look more like the poster I made. So if you click stroke again, as you can see, they're all popping up. Uh, this is quite a time-consuming process, but it doesn't. It, it's not too long, like it's not too bad. So we've got the text done, that's all good, and now we can change this to overlay if we want to just so it fades into the background a bit more. Um, but if you don't want to change it to overlay, you can just reduce the opacity of the blacks. Now, one thing I'm going to do is reduce the uh, opacity of this image, just so it's a bit fainter in the background and makes the black and white image pop more. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is add the title up along the top. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is add the heading text. Now, this is going to be similar to the other ones. It's just going to be James, and then it's going to be in a different font at this time. It's going to be Cubano. Uh, we're just going to leave this one white and then we're going to move it so it's horizontal along this line of the text. So you want to make sure it is flat along the line and then we're going to hold Alt and increase the size like so. It can be as big as you want or as small as you want and then we're just going to basically align it so it's horizontal with the two shapes. So that's that done. Next, I'm just going to drag this below, and then I'm just going to change this to Rodriguez. There we go. And then I'm going to change this color to that blue. So now I've got the two. 
I'm going to just reduce the size of this a bit so you can actually see it. And then I'm going to align it alongside these as well. So as you can see, that's looking quite nice. We need to add some effects to these. So if you double click on them and then you can add a drop shadow. Now you don't want this too big, otherwise it will just look silly on the text. Just enough so it looks like it's floating above. So you just need to drop shadow to James. And then for this one, you need to reduce the size again. You don't want it too big. Um, and then we're going to go to bevel and emboss. And then we're just going to add these the following settings so free zero and 32 depth now this gives it a bit more 3d effect because it needs it against the white background um, and once that's done that's all done the next thing we're going to do is probably add one image and then some texture and some two more shapes and then the whole thing's done so adding texture now i've got a graphics pack here it's the same one i always use it's just the visuals 50k pack now you can buy this or you can find your own textures but i'm going to use this today so what i'm going to do is go down to texture 10 sorry it was going to not texture 10 it's texture 12 for this one so i'm going to drag and drop this again on top of the text and you'll see change it uh, and clip it mask it to the text it will uh, overlay it but what I need is to use difference just so you can still see the colors, but also it's got some texture. Now, if you reduce the opacity to about 50, this gives it a nice subtle effect. And then that's all done for the heading. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add some texture over the black and white image. Now, this is going to be some paper, which is going to be texture four. I'm going to drag and drop this over the top like so and make sure it covers the whole image and you're going to want to make it black and white too. Go to my image adjustments and then go to black and white and then all I need to do is drag it below to that image and clipping mask it to it. Then we're just going to change it to overlay. There we go. Now I've got the texture on top of the design. Now if you want to you can add a layer mask and just paint away on, on his face. Uh, completely up to you. I usually do just because I feel like the face doesn't need the texture on. The next thing we're going to do is probably add some texture to the background and make sure it's not so just flat on the image. So I'm going to add some texture to the background, add some circles down here and add the Everton logo in the bottom right. Then we should be all done. Right, so you will have downloaded the Everton logo, which is this one here. I'm just going to drag and drop it in and I'm just going to minimize the size so it goes small. Drag and drop it down here like so I can make it a little bit bigger and then I'm just gonna bring it all the way down so it's just below um, there we go that's all done and what you're gonna need to do now is probably you can clip it mask it to it and then you just need to change it to subtract or saturation or luminosity works quite well uh, anything that will make it sort of just blend in with the background make it black and white that's in the next thing we're going to need to do is add a texture to this. We're going to use number 10 this time. I'm going to scroll down or number note number 10. We'll uh, use it all the way over the whole image. Now rotate it, make sure it fits, and then drag it across like so. Bring it all the way down to here. And then what you're going to do is find a blending mode which works well. Now this could be anything you want, really. You can use overlay if you want, but you don't have to. Anything that works well. So for this one, I'm going to use difference because I think it works really well with the white background it sort of shows it off um, and then that's all done now the last thing we're going to do is add three circles down there and then we're going to add the texture on the whole whole image and then we're done right so to do the texture on the circles well to create the circles you go to the ellipse tool change it to a gray color and doesn't matter what size you can have them as big as you want and then you're just going to make sure you select the stroke and go to dash lines and then you're going to create 20 and then now this should work fine you'll have your circle it's there and then you just need to select it and then you need to copy this twice or as many times as you think you'll need to and then you move them down into position like so like i'm doing right now and then you should be all good to go now you've got your free images then you just highlight them put them in a group and then you can change them to whatever blending mode you think suits them I'm going to probably use something like overlay or hard light looks quite good as well. There's there's plenty that look quite good um, depending on the color you use. But I'm going to use hard light for this one just because I think it adds a nice texture. And then for the final thing, I'm just going to add texture number 10 again. But I'm going to put this over the top of the whole image this time. And then we're just going to do the same as we did before. Put it in the corner and then we're just going to drag it over the top and OK. Now, this time we're going to choose probably the texture look quite rough around the edges. Um, it can be whatever you want, really. 
I'm probably going to choose something probably like exclusion. I think that will look well or difference. I'm going to use difference again. And if I just position it right, it should look quite nice. So we've got all that now. Then the last thing we need to do is use a camera or filter and then it will be all good. So we'll move on to that next. Right. So I know it doesn't look how it usually would because we haven't used the camera or filter. So what we're going to do is select it all. Well, actually select the bottom one and then select the whole thing, group it, command J E, and then it will create a whole image of the whole thing. Then take your selection tool and then cut away the bits that you don't need. So layer via cut and then it will cut them away. Then just go like that and then select your layer. And then we need to open up the camera or filter. Now we're going to show our mirrored option so we can see the difference that we do. Going to add minus four on the blue, minus two on the pink, plus two on the pink, sorry. Uh, reduce the exposure a little bit, increase the contrast, increase the highlights, decrease the shadows, increase the whites, decrease the blacks. Now you can do as much of this as you want. Like you don't have to do as much as I do. I'm just picking what I want to do to it. Increase the clarity a bit not too much and you can also you can increase you don't have to have as much blacks as like I've got because it makes the picture at the front look quite dark and the vibrance you can bring out and the saturation as much as you would like then we'll go to the curve now this is something that you can sort of play around with yourself define where you want it how you want it to look personally so I'm gonna have a mini s curve then we're gonna go to details and increase the sharpening quite a lot just so it makes the image look really clear really crisp and really nice now we're going to go to the um, color mixer and add some blue in uh, add some bit more blue in again I'd say maybe just a little bit though maybe a bit of pink as well purples and then we're going to go to the effects and we're just going to add grain and then a tiny tiny vignette we're going to add in in the corner and that'll be it really that's all we need to do calibration you don't need to bother with and if we just click OK as you can see We've created the poster that I had shown you at the start and it looks really good, really simple, uh, good use of shapes and images and there's a lot of different techniques with text and strokes in there. If you follow along with what I've done, you'll be able to learn quite a lot from this video and if you have enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments. If you have any problems with it, just give me a message or let me know in the comments down below and I'll get straight back to you. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. I hope you've enjoyed it and let me know if you want to see more like this. I'll see you in the next video.